All right, so let's see if we're ready for this. So, are you ready? You're ready, right? You're ready. Denny, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Class. Yes. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go through this mean value, which is actually just going to be average value. And this is stuff that we've already done. So we did it as um, in the AP text, and now we're going to do it as a DE text. So mean value, increasing, decreasing, anti-differentiation. Mean value for derivatives, if it is continuous on every point, that is a closed interval and differentiable at every point in between, then there's at least one point in between there which is in which its instantaneous rate of change is equal to the mean rate of change. So what that means is the slope in between two points, somewhere on that curve, that curve is going to have a derivative that is equal to their average. And it will make more sense when I give you this. So I have the points A and B. The line going through A and B is going to be straight through there, right? So the average in between there is going to be some value. So we're using the endpoints here. So this is a secant line. So it touches at both points right here. So in this case, my two endpoints, so it would be f of b, which is going to be the b value. So function of b, that would be uh, 4 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is going to give me 2. 4 over 2, which gives me 2, right? So, from there, I know that I'm going to have that. So, the mean value for this is actually, I'm also going to do the derivative. So, if this is my function, f prime of x is going to be 2x. Okay? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to try and find the point where the derivative is equal to the average value. So what that means is I'm going to take this and now I'm going to say that 2x is equal to 2. Because this one right here is for my secant line and this is my derivative. Derivative. So I take my secant, which is my slope of my secant line, and I set it equal to the derivative, which I get here, and divide both sides by 2. So, in words, the slope of the secant line is going to be 2. Slope of the secant line is equal to 2. The tangent right here, when x is 2, so f prime of 1 is also going to equal 2. So it means that the point that I'm looking for that is also going to be the same as this is going to be x equals 1. That means my derivative is equal to the average value here. Does that make sense or is that nonsense? You only got one half? I still don't understand what f prime. So when f, e f prime equals 1, it is the same slope when they're at 2? Okay, so we took... Are you okay with the derivative? The derivative. You're okay with the derivative, right? Yeah. Okay, so given my formula, the derivative at some point is equal to the average slope, okay? Uh, some point right here. So the derivative somewhere, right? 
We want to find some point. In this problem, we found out that it was C. My C is equal to 1, right? Yeah. Okay. It must be equal to my average, and we find the average by using a slope formula. So basically, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is all slope between two points. So the derivative is going to be equal to the slope somewhere in between there. Does that make sense a little bit or no? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you. Kinda, somewhat. Danny, so <clears throat> if I were to give you another problem like this, you'd be like, dude, I got this. So what are the steps that I did? What are the steps? So step one, I did what? Find slope between points. <clears throat> I found the slope, right? Yeah. Okay. Next one, step two, what did I do? Do derivative. Find derivative. Find the derivative. Okay. And then I went for step three, I set my derivative equal to my slope. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, and that gives me the point where they are equal. The X, yeah, the x value <clears throat> at the slope. Of tangent is equal to the average. Maybe kind of item by item gives me the x value of, at the slope of the tangent that is equal to the average. We will find this a little bit more. Yeah, kind of. There's a reason for getting, doing all these things. So it's all stuff that we've already done, but now we're going to be for a reason. And we'll get to that reason when we actually have application next unit. Increasing function, decreasing function. So if a function is increasing, what do I know about the derivatives? Yep, what do you know about the derivative? It's a positive? <clears throat> yeah, I should have a positive derivative, right? So my derivative should be positive. I should have a positive slope in between those values. Okay, uh, if it's decreasing, same thing. So by any points in between here that my first one is going to be less than my second one, that means that it's going to be increasing. First one is less than my second one. It's going to be increasing. Number two, if it's decreasing, if my first one is greater than my second one, first one's greater than the second one, then it is going to be decreasing. Okay. Now, right here, if they are differentiable, so for it to be increasing, my derivative's got to be greater than zero, and for decreasing, my derivative is less than zero. Positive slope, it's going up, right? Negative slope, it's going down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one right here. The function is increasing, where is it? Where is the function increasing? Where is it decreasing? So first thing we're going to find is I'm going to find a critical point. That's where my it's going to change from increasing to decreasing using the slope of the lines. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. So f prime of x 
is going to give me 6x squared minus 12. Yeah. Why are you saying like question mark? Why not? All right. And then from here, I'm going to set it equal to 0. So my derivative equals 0. So 0 equals 6x squared minus 12. Factor out of 6. And that's going to be 0 equals 6 quantity x squared minus 2. Okay, if there is a 6 out front of my factor, what can I do with it? If I divide both sides by 6, what happens? It's 0. It's 0. So that 6 can go away, right? Because yeah. there is no variable there. And now I'm going to have that 0 is equal to x squared minus 2. Add 2, so it's 2x squared x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. So that means I have two places in which that this is going to change. Okay? So given that right there, let's see. I'm going to go a negative square root of 2, and I have a positive square root of 2 on a number line. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug in numbers, and that's going to tell me positive and negatives. Give me a number that is less than square root of, negative square root of 2. Wait, give me something that is greater than that? Negative. Less than, right? Ooh. Not enough. Make it zero. Zero. How about, because it's a square root, right? How about just two? Negative two. Negative two, because square root of two would be, it's like 1.3 something. But we wanted to make easy numbers so we could try and do this mathematically. So let's try negative two. Try 0 and try positive 2. So I just need to find a number in each interval. So if I plug in negative 2 here into this one here, so negative 2 squared. Danny, what's negative 2 squared? You can. You're squaring it, not square rooting it. Negative 2 times negative 2 is? Oh, I know. Yeah, so I'm plugging in right here. So that's going to give me 4. 4 times 6. Minus 12. So that is that a positive or a negative? So all this over here is going to be positive. So that is a positive slope. So that means that it is going up at that point, right? It's going up at that point. Now let's plug in 0. Plug in 0. 0 squared. 0. Times 6. 0. Minus 12? Negative 12. So everything in between here is going to be negative. Yay. And then try it at positive 2 now. Positive 2 squared? 4. 4 times 6. Four. Minus 12. Positive 12. Or, yeah, positive 12. So everything over here <laughs> is positive also. Okay, so that means that this function is decreasing from where to where? From negative rad rad two. Rad 2 and then positive rad 2. So my interval for decreasing is going to be from negative rad 2 to positive rad 2. This is decreasing. No bracket. Okay. And... 
So it's decreasing. <clears throat> the reason why it's not a bracket, what is it when it gets to that right there? Zero. Mm -hmm. Zero is neither increasing or decreasing. And then my increasing... is going to be from negative infinity to negative rad 2, close union, positive rad 2 to positive infinity. So this is a lot of what we've already done. We did some of this when we did in limits. <clears throat> now we're actually just doing And guess what? That was it. We were just going to go over those. Make sense? Kind of? It's what we've already done, so that's why we, we do have a note packet for it. Uh, I'll do this one tomorrow. So, I want you guys starting on these to work on this.